All right, guys, we're back to round two of me trying to beat Mario and uh, talking about theology. Now, things have changed this time. I was able to connect my children's Nintendo Switch to the computer, so now I can have a little bit more reasonable gameplay. Last time I was playing on an emulator, and some of you gave me a really hard time saying that my gameplay was atrocious. Some of you even said that I needed to be uh, disciplined for my gameplay, which I thought was a little harsh, uh, but I understand. So uh, I'm still not great, as you'll see, but at least I have a real controller in my hand, not playing on a... Uh, not playing on a computer keyboard. So I want to continue the conversation. Several people have asked me about the conversation uh, about dispensationalism and covenant theology. And I ended last time by giving the, the overall view and distinction between the two, between covenant theology and dispensationalism. And we, we ended by saying that the biggest difference is understanding of their understanding of Israel. Covenant theology really recognizes the church as being the fulfillment of the promises to Israel. And dispensationalism sees a stark distinction between the church and Israel. So that is one of the big distinctions that we will see. But another distinction that we find between covenant theology and dispensationalism is what we call the discontinuity and continuity of Scripture. So we would say that uh, covenant theology focuses a great deal on the continuity of Scripture, that the, the, the things of the Old Testament continuing into the New Testament, the continuation of the, the old covenant system into the new covenant system. Uh, and then we have, uh, let's see here. Sorry, I had to pause the game there for a second, but uh, now we're back and we were talking about the continuity and discontinuity of Scripture, talking specifically about dispensationalism, dispensationalism and covenant theology. Covenant theology sees more of a uh, continuity between the Old Testament and the New Testament, and this uh, dispensationalism sees sees more of a discontinuity, more of a separation between Israel and the church, and making a strong distinction between the two, saying that there are promises that are given specifically to Israel that are not meant to be promises for the church and will be fulfilled in uh, in the life of ethnic national Israel. And uh, many of those promises, of course, coming in the millennial kingdom. So that is uh, the view of dispensationalism and covenant theology. But as I said in my last video, there is a third view. There are actually more views, but there's there's another view that I, I want to uh, bring out. And uh, <laughs> I'm dying here. Oh, no. And I don't have as many men this time. So this, this video may not last as long. So I want to try to get through New Covenant Theology. New Covenant Theology is... Um, a relative newcomer in the sense that uh, it doesn't have the the long history of covenant theology, and dispensationalism is somewhat of a newcomer as well. Dispensationalism is only a few hundred years old, uh, really starting back in the 1800s uh, with J.N. Darby, and then of course being popularized in the Schofield Reference Bible, and uh, and so to to say that something's a newcomer, well, uh, covenant theology has been um, the the, the position of Reformed theology since the time of Calvin. Uh, some would argue that it goes back, obviously, before that, but at least we can say uh, it can be traced to the... Um to the teachings of the Reformers, and uh, popularized in confessions like the Westminster Confession. That, that is certainly a document that teaches covenant theology, as well as um, the, uh, the 1689 London Baptist Confession holding to a Baptist version of covenant theology. So covenant theology, of course, is taught there. Um, so what's new covenant, new covenant theology, and how does it distinguish itself? Well, New Covenant theology focuses on um, a little bit more of the distinction between the Old Covenant and the New Covenant, and my game is over, uh, but I'm not going to stop because I am not done with telling about New Covenant theology, so I'm not going to finish just yet, start over and see if I can do better this time. So... The uh, New Covenant theology focuses on, uh, obviously, on the New Covenant. Some people think that New Covenant theology is like New 
covenant theology, like it's still covenant theology, but it's just a newer version of it. That's not exactly the best way to think about it. And in fact, that can be often somewhat difficult. As we talked about last time, covenant theology looks at the covenants of uh, that are unnamed, specifically the covenant of uh, works, the covenant of grace, and uh, the covenant of redemption, which was made before time. Those are the covenants that are focused on in classic covenant theology. But uh, this is hard. I become invisible when I, when I get, when I go back to being small. Uh, So classic covenant theology would see, um, classic covenant theology would say, Uh, There are three covenants unnamed in Scripture, but they are the covenants that we need to focus on, and that is the covenant of redemption, covenant of works, covenant of grace. But New Covenant theology would focus more on the actual named covenants of Scripture, and those would be uh, beginnings uh, actually with the Noahic covenant. The first covenant mentioned in Scripture is the Noahic covenant. Now, there are those who argue for a covenant with Adam in the garden, And uh, that is debated between New Covenant theologians and uh, progressive covenantalists uh, hold to a view called the creation covenant, which uh, progressive covenantalists is are are are, is 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 a a newer version of New Covenant theology, and they would say that uh, there was a covenant with Adam in the garden, and they and that covenant language existed there. Uh, but a lot of New Covenant theologians uh, were opposed to the term covenant of works. They were opposed to the idea of Adam uh, uh, and the idea of the covenant of works. And so the covenant of works is not a framework built into New Covenant theology. New Covenant theology, though, really is focused on the um, distinction between the New and the Old Covenant in regard to the law. One of the things about covenant theology that's very important is the understanding of the law, the 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 particularly the Ten Commandments. The the covenant theologians see the Ten Commandments as being the moral law of God, uh, and and that all moral law essentially coming out of the Ten Commandments. If you go through the Ten Commandments, you will find within them. Uh, according to covenant theologians, you'll find the basis for all moral law, and and that would include. Um, let's see, um, like for instance, with the, the do not commit adultery, uh, commandment, they would say, well, do not commit adultery includes all kinds of other sexual sin and all sexual sin falls under the category of do not commit adultery. And so it's not just about adultery. It's, it's a framework. And so, um, you know, honoring your father and mother is actually not just about your father and mother. It's actually about all authority. And therefore, when you when you disobey, for instance, a lawful command of the government, you're violating the fifth commandment because the fifth commandment is not just about mother and father, but it's about authority. So that's an important distinction to be made within covenant theology is they they put a, a very important, uh, uh, <laughs> a very important uh emphasis on the Ten Commandments. And where the distinction really lies then is with the Sabbath, because a lot of uh, those who hold the covenant theology hold to a Sabbath view, not a Saturday Sabbath view, though a lot of them hold to Sunday as the Sabbath. And so they would argue that the Sabbath is now for Christians on Sunday. I did a, a debate on this. If anybody's interested in listening to my debate, you can actually go to our website for our church or our YouTube page, rather, Sovereign Grace Family Church on uh, YouTube, SGFC Jax, and you can find, just look up Sabbath debate. You will find it there. And uh, we we debated that, me and Rob Hamm, who is a Presbyterian pastor, he took the position that Sunday is the Christian Sabbath, and I took the position that it is not. So um, I believe Sunday is the Lord's Day, but I don't believe that it holds the same restrictions as the Christian Sabbath. So anyway, getting back to the law, New Covenant theology really is is focused on understanding the law as a whole, uh, rather than seeing the Ten Commandments as the moral law, and then seeing the law as being a tripartite law, and that that's another thing that covenant theologians hold to. They hold to the law being three parts, uh, moral, civil, and ceremonial. And if you take the moral law 
uh, that's the Ten Commandments, the civil law or the laws given to Israel to live and function as a society. And then if you take the, uh, the ceremonial law, that would include sacrifices and things like that, all of those things that, of course, are fulfilled in Christ. We were told that those things represented Christ, pointed forward to Christ, and all those things. So, so that's, the, that, that's the, the trifold view of the law, uh, moral, ceremonial, and civil. And New Covenant theology says, no, it's, it's all one thing. It's all law, and the whole law has been abrogated in the New Covenant. We have a new law, the law of Christ. Christ, um, the 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 law that is given to us in the new covenant is our marching orders. Therefore, we don't have the same law as uh, the old covenant in the sense that when I say we don't have the same law, it, it's it's not as if it's a different God or a different law in that respect. But it is a it, 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 we don't we don't we are not bound by old covenant law, and we would base this particularly on such as Hebrews thir- uh, Hebrews eight, which says the old covenant has. Been been made obsolete, and therefore uh, we no longer are bound by that covenant. And so we're not part of that. We're not part of that covenant. We're part of the new covenant being, being brought into the new covenant by Christ. So that is a, uh, a, a the biggest difference, really, in new covenant theology is how the law is to be understood and how the overall breakdown of scripture. Again, going back through the covenants, when we talk about the covenants, we're talking about the covenants that are actually named. What covenants are named? Uh, the Noahic covenants, first covenant that is named, actually called a covenant. And uh, the second one, you guys who are watching me play right now know I, I, you know what I'm wanting to do, and it's just not working for me, and I am going to have to give up now. So uh, I'll do that. I'm just going to go do something else. All right, so the covenants that are named, the Noahic covenant is the first one that is named. After that is the Abrahamic covenant, and uh, then we have the Mosaic covenant, which is the covenant that's given in the law. Uh, then there is uh, the Davidic covenant. Now, very just just to put all the cards on the table, the word covenant is uh, not used with David either. It's uh, the the word. It's a promise given about the kingdom, but a lot of people do recognize that as God making a promise uh, to uh, regarding the covenants, and therefore uh, David w- sometimes referred to as the fourth covenant, the Davidic covenant. So you have Noahic covenant, you have the um, Abrahamic covenant, the Mosaic covenant and uh, the Davidic covenant. Then we have the new covenant. And the new covenant is, according to new covenant theology, is the fulfillment of all the previous covenants. The purpose of the new covenant is to bring about all of the promises that were in the old covenant. The old covenant, uh, or the old covenants, are all pointing toward a greater covenant, something that is yet to come. And that which is yet to come is Jesus. And Jesus is the fulfillment of all of the old covenants. All the old covenants point to him. Uh, we are not bound by the Mosaic covenant. We are not a part of Israel. We are, well, we are, we're grafted into Israel, but we are not, we're not part of the, um, the, the Mosaic legislation. So uh, the Mosaic legislation is, is not our marching orders. Christ is our marching orders. Uh, what Christ has commanded is our commands. Now, some, some people would argue that there's no distinction between what Christ said and what Moses said. And, and, and uh, on a fundamental level, there's some, there's some accuracy that it's all God's truth, and, and Jesus certainly didn't contradict um, anything moral in, in God's law. But at the same time, uh, Jesus does tell us that he gives us new commands. You know, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you. And so New Covenant theology focuses on the newness of the New Covenant, focuses a little bit more on the discontinuity side, even though uh, one could argue that it is more, uh, we look at more of co- more continuity than, say, the dispensationalists, because we don't make a big distinction between Israel and the church. We say Israel... Uh, Israel was a type of the church, and Israel uh, pointed toward the church. All right, my game is over, and I'm going to leave it with that. That that's the if you want to if you want to think of all this, think of it like a spectrum. Uh, on the right side, we would say that which looks at uh, the continuity of Scripture would be covenant theology. Covenant theology would look at a continuity of Scripture. Dispensationalism would be more discontinuity, and new covenant theology and progressive covenantalism would be somewhere closer to covenant theology, but less uh, than than the full 
uh, continuation. So I hope this video was helpful. Hope it was fun to watch. I did a little bit better. Still didn't do great. Uh, make fun of me in the comments if you like, because my gameplay is awful. But I'm going to keep trying to win this game while I teach theology. God bless.